Hey, I'm back with the remix. These other YouTube channels is my son's like Phoenix. What's cracking, big dog? Oh, welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE Fantasy Football. We are talking bust proof players today. All right, let's get into it. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley. Thank you for joining for the video. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed. I would never do that to y'all. So today we're going to look at some players who might not be the most exciting picks, might not be the league winning picks, but I could tell you what, you will not regret picking them due to consistency, due to the volume, due to the workload, due to the opportunity, due to the situation, due to a lot of due tos. Say louder for the people in the bike. So we're going to look at a few players at each position that I think are getting a little bit overlooked this year in fantasy football and can be very, 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 very key pieces to your team. And the chance of them busting is is lower than the chance of me not busting inside of like 45 seconds. So let's tuck our shirts in. Let's stop yelling, especially you. Let's see. Real quick before we dive in, I want to let y'all know that the Big Dogs Draft Guide is officially live as of last Wednesday. If you go hop over to monkeyknifefight.com and use the promo code BDGE when you deposit $10, play a $2 game, within the next 24 hours, you'll get an email from me giving you access to our season-long guide. All the players you should be avoiding, all the players you should be targeting, our rankings, etc., etc., everything in there. The Rookie Dynasty Guide, if y'all are still messing around with some Dynasty startups or you just want a better outlook on the rookies, and then Dr. Morse's Full Injury Guide. All of it is included, monkeyknifefight.com. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 dollars play a game for two dollars you will get access within the next 24 hours all that shit is for free just go do that monkeyknifefight.com all right let's talk about some bus proof players hey girl first one's pretty obvious i think we'll get a little bit more in the grit after we talk about matt ryan the quarterback of the atlanta falcons you could basically pencil this in on a year over year basis that the falcons defense is going to be trash that julio jones is going to get his and in turn, so is Matthew Ryan, especially while Dirk Cutter is our offensive coordinator in Atlanta. If you just look at the numbers in the four-year sample size that Dirk Cutter has been the offensive coordinator in Atlanta, Matt Ryan has never ranked outside of the top 12 fantasy quarterbacks. He has averaged 44-64 passing yards. So he's averaging nearly 4,500 passing yards a year under Cutter. 28 passing touchdowns, and what is ridiculous is over 40 pass attempts per game. The Dirk Cutter offense in Atlanta is averaging over 40 pass attempts per game in terms of the passing rate. Which percentage of their plays are passes? They have ranked first in the NFL twice, third, and seventh. So we can expect a whole lot of passes for Matt Ryan. The volume will be there. Quarterback one in all four years under Dirk Cutter going back to the 2012 to 24 stint that he had in Atlanta as the OC. He has thrown for fewer than 4,000 passing yards zero times over the last 10 years. You would have to go back over 10 years to find a season in which Matt Ryan did not throw for over 4,000 passing yards. We're going to keep this, this real, real simple. Everything I just laid out, plus the fact that they're playing in the Dome, on turf a lot, in this division in which there are going to be shootouts galore, the Saints, Tom Brady and the Bucks, and then Carolina's terrible defense. Every game is going to be throwing up 72 points in this division. Matt Ryan is going to be playing from behind, playing for his life. Dirk Cutters are going to be playing for his life. This just equates to a lot of fantasy goodness for Matt Ryan at the quarterback position. Let's move over to a more polarizing or intriguing player, and that is Mr. Devontae Adams. He's currently going off the board as the wide receiver, too, so I think fantasy gamers have uh, gotten a little bit smarter and, and gotten a little more savvy because last year he's coming off of a, a down year in which he dealt with this turf toe injury that cost him about a month of the season. Typically, fantasy gamers would start to discount a player like Adams, who wasn't bad. His efficiency was still very much there. The volume is still very much there on a per game basis. But the fact that he missed games, people start to kind of forget about him. But people have been aware. Had they brought in a single weapon to compete with Devontae Adams on the offensive side of the ball. A real single. Don't be fucking dropping Joseph DeGuara or whatever his name is. A third round tight end that's going to be like a fullback or some shit. They brought in absolutely nothing to this receiving core. Had they done that, I would have said, okay, maybe Adams' targets dip by like 15 to 20 on the overall yearly bottom line volume stats. 
That was not the case. We go back just two years. 2018, Adams catches 111 passes on 169 targets, almost 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns. In 2019, again, he missed four games with this turf toe injury, but his per game numbers were almost identical to 2018. If you pace out what he did last year to a full 16 games, this is what you're getting. 169 targets, 111 receptions. Wait, wasn't that what I just said for 2018? Yes, because they were the exact same fucking numbers if he prorated out to 16 games for 2019. The team started off really, really slow. And I think this cannot be overstated, just the situation or what was happening in Green Bay the first year under Matt LaFleur. You could tell the offense was just not clicking. There was something missing within the first month of the season. It looked clunky. They had not fully grasped it yet. They eventually did start to a month or two into the season. That is when Adams was hurt. So you had a weird start to the season where Adams kind of started off slow, had a huge breakout game, and then he got hurt. And then the offense kind of started picking up. Once he got back from the injury, look at these numbers from weeks 10 through the conference championship. So you're looking at a nine game sample size. Once he was back, the offense was understood by everybody. Things were clicking. He was averaging 11.3 targets a game, 7.6 receptions a game, 97.3 yards per game, and he scored seven touchdowns in nine games. That is 18.2 half PPR fantasy points per game last year in this all world season one of the best wide receiver seasons we've seen at least from a volume standpoint michael thomas averaged 18.8 half ppr fantasy points per game that is only 0.6 more than what Devonte adams did over the final nine games of last season and now we're going into the second year of this offensive system we almost always see an uptick in efficiency when it comes to offenses playing in the second season getting a second summer under their belt obviously things are a little bit different here but now they know the playbook they don't necessarily have to be together in order to understand the schemes behind it so i'm i'm definitely expecting some more efficiency on the offensive side of the ball for everybody here. now this is a bust proof list so are we concerned about Devonte adams's injury status so here's what i'll say you could look at this chart but listen to the words that i'm saying player profiler this is where you'll find this chart has this incredible new tool on their website it is officially live and it is at the bottom of every player page absolutely free you just scroll down to the bottom whatever player you want to type in Devonte adams scroll down to the bottom and it shows all of these players previous injuries as well as their fragility rating at each position this is so 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 important one of the biggest mistakes i see fantasy gamers make is that they take injuries out of context or they don't put any context behind the injuries and their entire analysis is just oh if he gets hurt this is something that if you only focused on this one thing i guarantee you would single-handedly become a better fantasy football player that is putting context behind injuries not just saying oh he'll be ready by training camp he'll be ready by week one like we literally have science and timetables for, for specific injuries like we literally have 20 year sample sizes of acls and what the timetable looks like to get back from them, right? We're not just guessing. Yes, the technology gets better, but we've seen about a zillion athletes tear their ACLs. So we know what the data says. The overwhelming majority of data tells us with all of these injuries, whether or not it should affect them in the next year, whether or not it should be something we're worried about from a future injury standpoint. So looking at the player profiler page of Devonta Adams, again, this is completely free. Playerprofiler.com. Type in whatever player you want. If you've listen to my content then you've probably already used player profile about seventy-eight thousand times but now this is integrated into every player profile which is fucking awesome go all the way down injury probability fragility rating those are amongst the positions you can see his fragility rating is 56th amongst wide receivers we're not really that nervous about it yes he's missed some time over the last few years but it's one game here it's two games here last year was the biggest one with the turf toe obviously that's not a lingering injury that's not something we have to be concerned about and you can go check out any player you want you know anyone that you're concerned with injuries right there on player profiler of course we also have dr morse friend of the show fantasy doctors and he is definitely not overly concerned about Devonte adams within the draft guide he does an injury rating as well as a breakdown of all of the players which you can get on bigdogdraftguide.com or again depositing on monkey knife fight using promo code bdge he gives adams a five out of ten injury rating going into next year but he also says that he is absolutely drafting Devonte adams only behind michael thomas so he's definitely not too concerned about it either. the packers just not bringing anything onto the offensive roster in terms of like target competition i just see no way that adams does not finish with 155 plus targets at the very floor and become a top three fantasy wide receiver once again which he was on a per game basis last year year let's talk about another ridiculously underrated fantasy wide receiver obviously adam's not underrated but this guy is is so disrespected 
It's Robert Woods of the Los Angeles Rams, currently wide receiver 19 in fantasy, back end of the fourth round, early fifth round pick in fantasy drafts right now. Finished off another fantastic campaign in 2019. 90 catches, team high 140 targets, 1134 receiving yards, two touchdowns in 15 games. What goes underrated with a guy like Robert Woods is that he added 115 rushing yards to the bottom line. There. So you look at Robert Woods and you're like, yeah, I don't really know if I like Woods because he's he'll never get to like 1400, 1500 receiving yard mark that we like to see our top 12 wide receivers really hit. But he gets really fucking close because he adds on anywhere from like 120 to 150 rushing yards to the bottom line now. So that 1150 turns to 1300 total yards. He gets a couple lucky breaks here or there. 1400 yards before you know it and that is within his range of outcome if you have to look at this this offensive situation overall right brandon cooks is now gone so we know who the top two wide receivers are on this team and that are that is robert woods and that is cooper cup what do we see from the offense in 2020 you know i've talked about this many 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 12 personnel sets for the rams in 2020 cup started running a lot more routes on the outside, which is not good for him. We saw his yards per route run, a very predictive measure, drop almost a half a yard from like 2.2 down to 1.7 over the last two years when he's running routes outside versus in the slot. He is not an athletic guy. He is not a guy who separates that well. He's a guy who finds zone. When you're running two tight ends, you got the two tight ends, you got the two outside wide receivers. Zone guys do not excel in those types of formats. When you have a bad offensive line, you got to put an extra tight end on the line to block for Jared Goff's uncomfortable ass in the pocket, meaning two tight ends outside. Robert Woods becomes the guy. I told you, he already had a team high 140 targets last year going into this new personnel, which was the, the majority of their second half of 2019 personnel, the 12th 12 personnel, two tight ends, bing, bada, bada, boom. Woods becomes the alpha here, and he was the alpha last year. People just don't want to admit it because he can't put up those high receiving yardage totals. But now we have that bottom line baked into it because of the rushing yardage. I want to look at the numbers that Robert Woods put up over the second half of last year. From weeks 10 to 17, Robert Woods was the wide receiver six in fantasy despite missing a game. He was the wide receiver three in fantasy points per game. He was the true alpha in Hollywood. Look at the splits. The dude averaged 15 and a half half PPR points per game, 19.2 PPR points per game, 11.4 targets he was getting, 7.4 receptions, 95 receiving yards. He was so good when this team started going to 12 personnel. And the fact that they did not upgrade their offensive line this offseason, I know they'll get some guys back from injuries or whatever. This this was a really bad offensive line this year. It tells me that they're going to do a lot of the same packages that they were running over the second half of last year. I'm not a, a huge proponent of just straight looking at like touchdown rate in order to predict how we're going to you know improve or decrease in the touchdown department because the sample size of an NFL season is just so small. But Robert Woods had two touchdowns on 140 targets. Like even Leonard Fournette is out here laughing at him. Two touchdowns on 140 targets 1.3 percent of his receptions went for touchdowns up to this point in his career robert woods has scored on 4.1 percent of his catches which is three times more three times higher than what he did last year since he's moved over to la that number was 5.1 percent so you're talking about almost four times more likely to score up until last year on his receptions. An extremely unlucky year for Robert Woods. And I want to break those big facts down even further. Since the year 2000, I'm going to read these stats off. Since the year 2000, there have been 220 wide receivers that have seen 140 targets or more in a season. 220 wide receivers since 2000 that have seen 140 targets in a season. Robert Woods is one of five that brought in two touchdowns or fewer. One of five. I haven't even done the math. What if five divided by 220? That is 2.2%. He is in the bottom 98th percentile when it comes to that. Of the remaining four guys, they all scored at least five touchdowns in the following season. So without Brandon Cooks here to kind of muddy the pecking order, Woods is set up for another monster year in 2020. I mean, listen, if he comes even close to putting up what he did in the second half of last year in 2020, motherfuckers kick in the door, wave in the 4-4 at any top 12 fantasy wide receiver. He's going to finish as a wide receiver one, a little bit of touchdown luck, and I'm fucking rolling Bobby Trees up and smoking that joint on every fantasy team that I have. So we've talked about Matt Ryan. We've talked about Bobby Trees. We've talked about Devontae Adams. Let's talk about a running bike that y'all are going to get big angry about, and this is David Montgomery. David Montgomery, and this is not me lying to make it sound better, but is he's falling down in ADP. He's going as 
the running back 26 right now. And that I just cannot get behind because they added apps. You want to talk about the Packers not adding any weapons in the passing game for Devontae Adams? David Montgomery is basically the running back version of that. Like, what the fuck are they doing in the NFC North over here? I don't know what kind of coaching incest carousel they got going on, but shit needs to change. One thing that won't change, though, is David Montgomery's role this year they drafted no running back of note they added no free agent running back of note and you have ryan pace the gm coming out and saying david montgomery can be the team's feature back and carry ca carry a heavier load in 2020 i mean the dude almost had 275 touches last year so a little bit of a heavier load you're looking at a 300 touch back as the rb26 this basically means david montgomery is going to be taking about every single carry out of the backfield last year he out carried Terry Cohen, basically his only competition at running back, 242 to 64. Cohen is one of those guys who plays the majority of his snaps. Like, it doesn't mean if David Montgomery has his, like, breakout year this year that Terry Cohen has to fall back. Terry Cohen played in the slot, out wide, or in line on 42.2% of his snaps last year. Taylor Gabriel is now gone, which means Terry Cohen is probably playing a little bit more in the slot. The Cohen discussion stops here. It has nothing to do with David Montgomery. This is David Montgomery's backfield. Don't get me wrong. David Montgomery was bad last year, especially for where people were drafting him. The reason I keep him on this bust-proof player list is now where you're drafting him, there's no way he can bust. At running back 26, there is no way he's not putting up top 26 numbers given that his volume is going to be top 12. I don't think he's going to turn that efficiency-wise into top 12 numbers, but I would be absolutely shocked if David Montgomery does not return a top 20 fantasy running back season in 2020 uh, considering how bad the chicago's offensive line was last year at run blocking they were really bad david montgomery actually was not terrible per pff he ranked eighth in the nfl in avoided tackles it was josh jacobs nick chubb chris carson derrick henry joe mixon c mac zeke and then number eight was david montgomery but going back to the volume argument going back to the volume argument montgomery was the entire backfield for the chicago bears anywhere near the end zone in the red zone in the in the 10 zone on the goal line he was top 10 in the nfl in terms of carries inside the 10 yard line he was number six in goal line carries last year he saw 87.5 percent of chicago's goal line carries last year 87.5 percent of goal line carries went to david montgomery leonard fournette was the only player who saw a higher rate of his team's goal line carries go to him Leonard Fournette got 100% of them. Still finished with three touchdowns. Guy fucking stinks. Not only is he getting all the in-between the 20s carries, but he's also getting inside the 20s carries. Quarterback change is obviously a big factor here, right? Nick Foles comes in, which I think is an upgrade for all the offensive skill players involved. It means a little bit more of an efficient passing offense, better targets for Allen Robinson, better targets for Anthony Miller. It means the offense will run a little bit more smoothly. I, I mean, it's not like, it's not anything to fucking write home about it's not anything to make a fucking 45 minute youtube video about except i'll do it because i'm fucking out of my mind but i do like i it's an upgrade because defenses don't have to prepare or or, or pretend not to prepare for fucking mitch trubisky they're probably going out the fucking club live the night before playing and making mitch trubisky look like a college quarterback without any fucking hesitation so they can't do that with nick Foles. the way i look at it is montgomery's gonna get ridiculous volume we've also seen rookie running backs struggle before in their first year especially in a situation that he was in last year with a horrible quarterback a horrible offensive line bad play calling they're running Cordell Patterson as if they're trying to lose the game like it makes no sense what they did last year so hopefully they learn from this, their mistake again we've seen guys like Melvin Gordon we've seen guys like Le'Veon Bell who struggle their first year because of the situations and really jump up the next year because the volume is continuing to be there so do yourself a favor draft David Montgomery as the running back 26 but do yourself a second favor don't watch the Bears game do not watch him play because he is not going to be a fun guy to having your fantasy lineup and root for big plays because that's not what he does but the volume will make sure he scores another six to eight touchdowns this year it will make sure that he is bust proof for y'all i got one more player that i want to talk about and that is the boy mark andrews tight end of the baltimore ravens i think we can all agree that mark andrews was pretty good last year tight end two in standard leagues led the tight ends in the nfl in touchdowns with 10 of them 0.8 fantasy points away from being a top three tight end in half PPR. And I want to show you guys something. I debated whether or not I wanted to show this to you because I felt like if I did, some of you guys might have a heart attack. I don't know if I could be charged for murder. I don't know if I could be charged for manslaughter, like manslaughter by big facts, MBBF. Like, can they use that against me in court? I don't know. But I was thinking like, fuck it. You know, all the dogs got to eat. This list is a percentage played by tight ends on their respective offenses. So you see Kelsey at 92.5%. That means he played on 92.5% of the Chiefs 
offensive snaps last year. You have Kelsey, Waller, Ertz, Rudolph Kittle leading the way. Ravens tight end Nick Boyle at 65.6%. Look where Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews are. Tied for 39th amongst tight ends, playing on just 41.4% of the team's snaps. Mark Andrews played the 39th most snaps. Mark Andrews finished the year as the tight end four in fantasy. And I get it. He scored 10 touchdowns on 64 catches. But if he comes even close to a full-time player getting near the playtime that the Kelseys and the Kittles get, there's no reason why he can't live in that upper echelon 120 to 130 targets per year type player at the tight end position. He's that good to command that number of targets. Going back to the volume play, routes run. So the number of just pure routes run in 2019 amongst tight ends. Kelsey, Ertz, Gesicki, Hooper, Waller. Mark Andrews, 25th with 295. That's almost taking these top end tight ends and chopping the number of routes in half. And the dude still finished as the tight end four. And I want to show you one more really, really useful tool on player profiler and it is the hog rate i know this chart is absolutely disgusting but you'll see in the bottom right corner the hog rate is the targets per snap and it's used to capture the rate of passing game utilization on a per play basis because we're talking about mark andrews who doesn't get the volume but when he is on the field he is utilized in the passing game as much as any other tight end guys commanding targets is a skill hog rate is one of the more useful statistics on player profiler especially for a position like tight end where the actual snap rate and the actual routes run and stuff fluctuate pretty greatly from team over team his only competition for targets is hollywood brown and y'all know i love hollywood brown but we've never seen him do it and he's a pure outside guy for the most part right andrews down the seam in the end zone, Hayden Hurst, who played on 42% of the snaps last year, ran over 200 routes, which is creeping on fucking Mark Andrews' 295 number, is gone. So he was basically their number two pass catching tight end, which moves Andrews into a much cleaner role, a much cleaner path to be the pass catching tight end of consequence on every single play for the Ravens. Tweeted some of these things out, some of the pictures that you just saw of Mark Andrews's lack of playtime and someone tweeted underneath it one uh, you know replying to one of my tweets and he said it could be a decrease in efficiency and an increase in volume type situation and I said that's exactly what it's going to be but that presents major upside because we know for sure only one of those things is happening we know the volume is going up for Andrews you don't have an all pro tight end you don't have a guy who just absolutely dominated and was one of the most prolific tight ends in the league playing on 42 percent of snaps and not giving an increase in volume we know that's going to happen but do we know the efficiency is going to come down maybe but if he can put up 75% of what he did last year efficiency-wise, I think he's good enough to do it. But the volume skyrockets, that's where the upside comes in. That's where the ceiling comes. And I think he's bust-proof because we know the volume is going to go up. And we know how involved he is in the offense as the number one target for Lamar Jackson. So I actually think Mark Andrews might be one of, if not the best, overall value picks at tight end this year in fantasy football you could usually get him in the fourth round i've gotten him in the fifth round in a bunch of best ball leagues so like andrews I, I i think people are really sleeping on him for the fact that he was just so good on the volume that he did not get last year all right so draft these motherfuckers and enjoy the benefits reap the benefits you should also reap the benefits of the draft guide y'all if you thought the things that we're talking about in this video and the videos that we've been putting out this summer are good, you are going to love the draft guide. We work very hard on it. It's a way to support the brand. Literally 10 bucks on Monkey Knife Fight. You deposit it using promo code BDGE. You play a game on there of $2 or more. And within 24 hours, I will email you access to all of the guides, the Dynasty Rookie, the Season Long Guide, Injury Guide by Dr. Morse. It's got every injury player injured possible fucking injuries i got too much to say i don't even know how to say it in a normal english human voice injury rating one to ten of every player as well as a video breakdown of the injury that they've suffered or are dealing with at the moment and then it's got my top sleepers most undervalued players the do not draft list the all fade list for 2020 and it's got our must draft players round by round you must target y'all will win the chip as well as a ton of other exclusive articles and videos and and this will be updated throughout the entirety of the summer the rankings our ppr standard half ppr super flex will also be updated throughout the entirety of the summer everything is interactive there are links there are videos it can be used on your fucking mobile phone it can be used on your computer it can be used on your tablet it is the number one resource in fantasy football for your 2020 season monkeyknifefight.com use promo code bdge when you deposit 10 bucks and it is yours for free as well as 25 dollars to play with on monkey knife fight i'm out i will see y'all tomorrow on Bunk Bed Breakdowns, our Dynasty show.
Peace.